Hey guys, just want to get your thoughts on this idea for a pattern based or modular templating approach to uh, Bricks Builder. I'm going to show you very quickly where I've got to. Uh, don't judge my look and feel at the moment, it's just uh, really just a workbench for me to play with. I uh, am far from finished on uh, where I want this to be. I'll quickly create some content with you to show you what I mean. Uh, the thing that has inspired me is there's a lot of templates coming out or template libraries coming out for bricks where they just keep adding more and more templates and the templates all seem to be pretty much the same thing with slight different alignments or videos instead of images or whatever and it's quite difficult to decide which one are you going to use um, I think a better approach is using patterns, design patterns and then building up your templates in a modular way show you what I mean very quickly so I'm going to copy my JSON to the clipboard for this basic layout I'm going to paste that into my bricks it's there I'm going to call this my team section okay and what's this the team I'll just call this my team container do I need to this container will do is that going to clash with anything here I've got wrappers one thing you have to careful, be careful of is that you don't clash with any of the names down here. All right. Now I'm going to change this to be my main layout. So I'm going to cut that to the clipboard, copy that to the clipboard, type main, main layout. Okay. And there it is there. Now from the top down, I'm then going to right click AT, Advanced Schema. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to go to my class converter and create the classes. All my BIM classes on all of these are now created based on theme section up top here. That's the theme section container, theme section main layout, and it's also still my BB layout, well, so BB from Bricks Builder. Um, so it's uh, it's still all there. Now I'm gonna go back to that element there. I'm just gonna, in brackets, paste the original name in there so I know that even though this is my main layout element of my teen section it is also a block which is the bb layout one so an element can be more than one thing it can can be a block on its own and it can also be an element of another block um, so that's that's the first concept here right so that's that there we've got that all set ready to go uh, i'm going to just put some content in here so the, our amazing people Uh, maybe we'll call this a this one here. Get to know us. Um, I'm gonna put a lead in. I'll just grab something from ChatGPT for that. Chuck a lead in there. It's gonna be too wide. I'll just tidy this up a little bit so we can see here the line height on that with this font is giving us a lot of top and bottom spacing. So on our team section heading, let's set our line height to one. And that got rid of quite a bit, but still outside of the box. Maybe we'll make it around 0.8. That's kind of better. That'll do. So groups those two together. Our lead here, team section leads, but too wide. So let's make that a max width of 80 characters. Yeah, that works okay. Got some content we're going to stick in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that uh, dummy content there. Um, go back to my builder here, and I want to stick in a two-column uh, grid. So copy the JSON for that, and paste that into my body content in there, which is actually a section. So I'm going to drag that into there and get rid of my section. I'm still playing with what should be pasted as sections and what should be pasted as uh, blocks uh, or divs. All right, so now we have a uh, layout for that. We're going to now call this here. Put this down. It's a body in here, BB layout 2. Uh, let's call this our team, team grid. We we'll use this as a block. So from this level here, let's call that team grid. We're going to get rid of these cells. One, two, get rid of the cells. Uh, back to my builder. I'm going to grab a card. So the cards. So I like these cards here. Copy. I know what I've done with these is I'm only copying the first card, even though it's a grid in the display here. I'm going to find a better way of uh, describing that. 
paste that card into there. So now I've got a card there. Okay. So team grid, I'm going to call this a item. an item and then everything below it should be okay so now we can on our team grid which will be a block right click class converter and create a class create classes did that create them it did okay so now we've got this block here which is a item in our body inner um, and we've got some items here I'm going to put that back as a in brackets our card Two, so we know that's got say our card two with all our CSS for that card. All right, I'm then going to just duplicate this out a couple of times. One more, four column grid. Okay, there's our grid. Now, because this is a, a list, I'm going to select my team grid. I'm going to make that a UL. I'm going to my layout and I'm going to get rid of all my padding and margin. Okay, and then I'm going to add an ARIA attribute to this, uh, which is just a personal preference. So this will be ARIA label of uh, theme. The reason we do this is when, because we're representing this as a list, when a screen reader gets to it, instead of just saying list with four items, it's going to say our team list with four items. That's just a preference for me. Uh, for accessibility, uh, now that's, everyone has their own ideas on what they should be, so that's a UL, so I'm going to go to my team there, and item, I'm going to make that an I. Be easier just to delete these three, duplicate those. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the folder because that's just basic stuff. So, what we need to do is remove our wireframe cells now, which are just really for our layout. Um, and the easiest way to do that is for with advanced schema to so right click, go to my component cast manager. Bulk actions, I want to delete anything with wireframe. Uh, and I want to remove that from the elements, but not delete them from the global class list. There's all our wireframes gone. Right. So hit save. Build on the front end. And there's our layout created. Rather than just grabbing a we're trying to find a template that looks like this what we do is we get our main layout which is our header body and footer with our heading and our lead in it we then put a two column grid pattern in there and then inside that two column two column grid we then stick our cards in there now this could just as easily be from that point down uh, the steam grid here these items could quite easily be a query loop for those now the next thing I want to show you is using a modular approach to these. What we can do, I'm getting a bit sluggish here. Um, what we can do is on this card, we've got some CSS. And the way I'm creating all of my modular classes is I'm defining all of the CSS at the block level, not using the UI, not putting them on the individual elements, putting it all on the block level and creating uh, locally scoped variables for everything. So let's say we want to create a modifier for this background to be different. I've got the overlay background. What I would do is copy that name. I'll then create, paste it in there, and I'll create this, I'll call this neutral. So we've got a set card two neutral. Let's get back to our card two. So this has gone very sluggish on me all of a sudden. I'm going to grab my variable here for my overlay background back to my modifier I'm going to make this I'm 
neutral, dark, maybe 70. Okay. All right, save that. All right. Now, first one has got a neutral dark 70 overlay. The others are all the default primary dark with this. Okay, that's one way of making your modifier. So it's really, really simple. Create a very simple modifier and overload one variable. And that's it. And then you can just apply that modifier to any class you want. Okay, the other way we can do this is if we change this to... Actually, let's make this a 3. Actually, no, we're not going to change it there. We'll just um, modify it as it is. So what we can do from here is we've got a team grid, which is our block level here. We go to the team grid. And on there, what we can do is do a root. I'm going to search for, uh, under that, we're going to look for item. Item, and then nth child of even. And we're going to, I've still got that variable there. I have overlay background. Neutral dark 70. Okay. Now what we're saying is that every even one, so oops, so refresh. So our first one's just got the default, second one's got the neutral, third one's got the default, fourth one's got the neutral. So by using these scope variables gives you an awful amount of control over creating modifiers or targeting them with uh, CSS selectors uh, for different scenarios. So I think it's a really good way of doing it. Um, worked on this quite a bit, just applying some of the ideas and concepts as I go along. Uh, I'm liking it. Uh, there are some quirks, which I'm not going to go through. There's a lot to not talk about it here. Uh, but really at this stage, I'm just wanting to get some ideas, some feedback. What do you guys think? Is this, is this the right path? Is this the wrong path? Are you seeing some things where that I'm not seeing that you, know, you just don't think are going to work well? Um, I'd love to get some feedback before I go too far with this. Um, so yeah, so if you have anything you'd like to let me know, or drop it in the comments or find me in the Bricks uh, Facebook community and send me a DM. Uh, always happy to hear from you guys. So thanks for listening, guys.